Hi everyone, I'm Lisa Gossels, Artistic Director of Boston Jewish Film, and I'm so excited to be in conversation with filmmaker Ohad Milstein after the screening of his incredible film, Summer Nights. Hello. Welcome, Ohad. Thanks for joining from Tel Aviv. My pleasure. Ohad, you're a producer, director, cinematographer, and editor of documentaries, and you're a lecturer at the Bezalel Academy of Art and Design in Israel. You produced, directed, and filmed and edited Summer Nights, which was named the best Israeli film at Dakaviv in 2021, and garnered the award for best mid-length documentary at the Israeli Academy Awards in 2021. And I know you've gotten a lot of other honors. I just want to congratulate you on this masterwork of a film. Thank you very much. And um, the moment I saw your film, uh, and I've now seen it twice, I wrote to your distributors, Hedva and Hadar at GoTo Films, and said that yours was the first 10 of a movie I had seen since joining Boston Jewish Film. Your film is so tender and poetic and profound and meditative and mesmerizing. And I love how through the whispered conversations you had with your then six-year-old son, Alva, how your film explores so many of the big life questions about life and love and God and what happens after and all these questions and how your film is also an exploration of fatherhood, um, your relationship with Alva and your daughter and also with your own father, which adds a whole other layer of depth to the film. Um, I was struck by how you capture this very delicate time in the life of your whole family, um, the day before Alva's first day of first grade and go back in time. And we end with that like a beautiful poetic bow of the film. Um, there's so much to talk about. And I just wanna say the honesty of your conversation with your son and how you were really in equal conversation, like how you really thought out your answers was just very rare. Um, your son is an old soul He's beautiful, dreamy, thoughtful, intelligent, honest, and a dancer. Those feet, the shots of his feet were beautiful. You and your wife must marvel about where his ideas and questions come from. Well, I think these questions are questions of any kid at this age. Uh, it's just about uh, expressing them and uh, having it open uh, with uh, people that are around you. Because I remember myself, and I think this is one of the starting point of this film, um, as a kid, asking the same questions. I was just very embarrassed and ashamed and a bit afraid to ask my father those complicated questions. I remember, first of all, I didn't want to uh, make him sad. And I uh, also didn't know that I'm allowed to ask those questions. So. Uh, but I do remember myself as a kid of six, seven, and eight, uh, asking myself those questions before falling asleep, and those moments of uh, between awakeness and asleep, those uh, moments when my father was uh, closing my light, the light in the room, and uh, saying good night. Everything was calm and uh, nice, but I remember those moments as a kid very difficult it was uh, moments of me struggling with those very complicated thoughts and trying to solve them myself and i think this is one of the motivations to start with to uh, that drove me and my wife Rachel to spend those moments with the kids and not to just say good night and leave them in the room we since they were born we practice till now Alu now is nine already um those moments together with them they fall asleep when we are in the room they breathe they can talk between them they can talk with us and um this is something we are really believing we really believe in um i mean that comes through so beautifully in your film and i do think it's somewhat of a rare thing um ohad that you and rachel have adopted as parents and I love how you open the film with all of us saying, Dad, my mind is full of thoughts and it's hard to sleep. And that it was really resonant of what you remembered and those questions. And I was thinking that I have a five-year-old niece and I'm a daughter at this point. And just, you know, it makes you reflect on your own life as you see this film and all these questions and how you answer these questions. And I was thinking your kids must have a more analog life. You know, they're, I don't imagine your kids are watching cartoons and movies a lot, that you're, it's, it's, it's a way of parenting that, that comes through in the movie too. 
That's true. We are letting them watch a bit of those uh, um, segments, uh, but it's quite uh, limited. They, they do watch before they go to sleep around 30 minutes mm -hmm. of um, screens. And they are choosing each evening what to watch and they are deciding between them each night someone else is picking the segments he's interested in. And uh, this is happening. It's very limited. We are quite Amish in this, I, I know. <laughs> so when was the genesis? When did this become a film? You were having these conversations already. When did it become a film? And when did you decide to explore your relationship with your dad and to bring your father deeply, more deeply into Alva's life? Um, well, I think the uh, first motivation of the film was to capture this moment of him, this way of look, looking at the world, this pureness and very naive and soft way of looking at the world. Because uh, I remember that uh, Alva is in this film, I find, and I also hear from other people that they find him cute and charming. But when he was two years old, he was much more cute and charming. And uh, this I don't have captured so when he became six i said okay before he <laughs> goes to first grade i know that each time he moves from one institute to another another bite uh, of course metaphorically metaphorically uh, is uh, taking out of his uh, very um, unique um, and soft personality so i thought i might i must uh, capture this on film so i have it and then i uh, decided to record those questions. Uh, we recorded them during this summer holiday before he went to first grade. So we recorded at the night, just sound, and we and I was filming him during the, the day. And this was really the first motivation was very small to capture it, to have it. And uh, then when uh, it uh, gathered together and became, the volume became bigger, I, uh, and also, I didn't know how to answer his questions. I decided to uh, reflect some of the questions and to um, uh, go back to uh, my father with them. That, as I said, I was embarrassed to ask those questions when I was small. So I decided to confront with my father um, just now, you know, when I was filming, as to close this circle. Well, it added so much depth, and I might say it also took courage maybe for your father to be in the film in a certain way. Um, what was that like? I was really moved to tears at the end of the film and that you dedicated the film to your father and did the making of the film deepen your relationship with him because he suffered trauma and that impacted your relationship. And I thought that some of your um, experience with your dad um, might have impacted who you are as a father too, you know, with your children. I'm sure it influenced. Uh, I had. I'm very attached to my father and uh, very close to him, and um, we had uh, quite a strong relationship. But it was not very. The communication was not as open as I have with Alva, and um, but I think the emotional uh, uh, strength is there, and it was because I had very strong emotions to my father when I was small still so well, yes it did reflect that that comes through um nature plays a very big role in your film you know I loved how so many scenes were of nature or with Alva in nature or your father swimming in the water and um not just the visual beauty but the sounds of nature and I didn't know if you wanted to talk about that um, I think when I try to uh, get to know a person, the less interfer interferences there are, uh, it's better. And interferences, I mean, um, other people. I think the uh, really high way to a person is putting a camera in front of him. Of course, when he wants to be filmed, then he's collaborating. And mm -hmm. the, the second you press record when there is no other interferences you really get to a very intimate situation with the person like he opens most of the people i met are opening very um 
naturally. So when I, when I this is one reason to clear clear other people and also civilization uh, is also a distraction. Uh, I think the main power of those conversations that I made with Alva is that it were that they were held when there was no distractions. It was night, the light was off, there was no camera there, just a recording, um, mm -hmm. a sound recorder, and uh, the thoughts were very um, clear. I don't know if clear is the right word, but they were not interfered with other uh, distractions. And when I go to the nature, I think for me, it's the way to connect, really, to connect to the ground, to connect to the world, to connect to my own thoughts and to my own um, feelings. And uh, I think there is this is a great way to um, get attached to your own self. And I think when I'm filming a person, it's helping very much to, uh, to get through uh, the combination of uh, cleaning the distractions uh, and going to nature, I think it's uh, it's making a very um, uh, clear and crystal uh, um, way to get to the person. Um, I just wanted to really compliment you on how you interposed so many of the scenes of Alva with nature. Like one of my favorite was when you asked him about God or he asked about God that he was running on the beach. And then in the series about love, romantic love, with Alize, that he's catching butterflies. So those were two of my favorites. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, actually, the, actually, this scene with the butterfly was the first scene I filmed uh, uh, in this film. It was the first film, uh, first scene. Uh, we were in Switzerland, uh, as as uh, you can see in the movie, my uh, partner is uh, Swiss, Sochel, and uh, we spent the summer vacation half in Israel, but half in Switzerland as well. And uh, she said, we're going to those, uh, to this uh, 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 nature play, like to the, this, um, I don't, I don't remember the name of the place. Mm -hmm. um, I think it was um, or something like that. Uh, you should take a camera. And I am not a person that goes with a camera all the time. I'm not this kind of a filmmaker that always carries his camera and then filming all the time. I think it's it's also, there is a, a violation of, uh, of a moment when you, sometimes when you're uh, filming, because then you're so focused on uh, on capturing it in the right way I am so focused on capturing mm -hmm. it in, in the right way. So I sometimes also miss the, um, the the thing itself as a person, not as a filmmaker. Mm -hmm. And so she said she insisted I take the camera with me. Yeah. To this uh, location, and um, once I got there, I was so inspired with those. Uh, it was so many butterflies and ants and insects of different kinds. It was really, it was like like a paradise of insects. So I was three days filming and catching, catching those butterflies. And this was the first scene after that. And together with the conversations, I, I said, okay, I have something. I want to continue with that. This was the heart of the film. That's amazing. I'm curious about how this film relates to some of any of your other films. Is this your approach as a filmmaker? Do you have any influences? You you teach. Um... Well, to start with, this film is kind of a um, um, twin brother of a film that I did uh, uh, when when I was when Rachel was pre pregnant with Alva. It's called Week Twenty Three. Uh, and it's about the pregnancy of uh, Rachel. Um, so mm -hmm. there is a, um, there is a thread that goes between the films. Uh, but in general, uh, I think all my films are kind of um, a continuous uh, voyage because I, the, as a as a um, technique, I I do most of the things by myself. Uh, whatever I know to do, I I insist to do myself. So this is the, as you said, the cinematography and the editing and the producing and directing and sound recording. Uh, I do my by myself. The post production I do not do 
um, by myself because I'm not, um, I don't have the skills. Mm-hmm. But I'm Alva to to catch some of these skills so we can work together when he grows up. Um, so I I do think there are the the passion and the, the, the issues that are that are issues that are uh, um, triggering me are the same in all the films. It's as you said, it's the connection of a, uh, it's a per, it's a person try to get very intimate with a person and the connection with nature and uh, some existential uh, thoughts about uh, being a person in this world. Beautiful. Um, in terms of the editing, like because you were doing everything, did you have very hard choices to make? How much did you film versus use? And that's where you really got to tell your story in a different way. So I'm curious about that process for you. So as I said, I'm not this kind of person that is going around with his camera all the time. I'm very selective with the things that I'm filming because um, it's it takes, as I said, it takes uh it takes my attention very much from from the moment from being and also it uh it's very tiring it takes a lot of energy to film like um so i don't film a lot to to have to have something uh, but uh, i kind of really take the camera up only when i'm inspired and this makes a very uh, the choice is much more easier in the editing room because when you're inspired when you're filming it's much more easy to be inspired when you're editing and um, the process is quite uh, you know there is something very special to I, I think the as, as you, you, you comment about the father and son relationship so there was something very special about uh, this process because first of all I was very inspired when Alba was Open, opening those subjects with me and also I was um, it moved me it was it's very difficult there is I think there is no uh, harder questions to be asked by your son is how is how is this looking at the other side or what's happening yeah. at the end uh, so I was uh, very inspired and moved and um, you know emotionally I was flooded and this was uh, very special during the filming and also I was editing when Alva was already going to first grade, so I had the the pleasure of spending the time. Also, when he was going to school, I was going now to the editing uh, process, and I was sp- spending the whole day with him in the editing room. So, uh, I, I I had really quality time <laughs> with him this uh, in this year. So it was very special for me. Oh my gosh. Um... And what you captured on his first day of school, that was extraordinary because we got everything delicate leading up and we have some scenes where he's live on camera, but that you captured some of that anxiety and is almost tearing up going in. And then we get to see for only the second time in the film, a glimpse of you hugging him. Um, and that you tell him to he's breathing to five, that you replayed that. And by the way, I did that yesterday when I needed it. I took a walk and I did the same breathing, just so you know. Mm-hmm but that you captured that. So that was remarkable. That could not have happened again and you got it. Um, and it left me with with tears and all kinds of extra love for Alva and your family. It was It's really a masterwork. Thank you. Um, well, yes, it was qu- quite a, a stressful situation because he was really in his first day of school and he was like, very distracted by this thing that he needs to accomplish with that's getting into the school and uh, i uh, was quite focused on uh, both him and also being able to have it on camera um but he's a patient he's a patient kid and he was listening so we we had it it was uh, um it was worth it was um it were it worked out good at the end, and and regarding the um, no, I don't have any more. It's too complicated to explain to me. Um, clearly, your family must have seen multiple cuts of the film of this edit. But what has it been like for them all to live in the world with the film? I'm sure they've been to screenings with you. Um, did it show at Alva's school? I'm just curious what that's been like for the life of your family and your dad and. So I think uh, Alva is 
Alva and all the family, of course, but especially Alva, because he's the kind of the protagonist of the film. He's very proud of the film, and he came to the premiere in uh, Doha Aviv, and he was very happy, and uh, and he he was really happy to be part of the film. And uh, uh, I think in general, it's not that he, his life is changed completely because of the film. It's a documentary. He doesn't get that much of uh, exposure, uh, at least here in 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 Israel. Uh, maybe people that are from the documentary industry, they know Alva, of course, and they will uh, react to that. And uh, he was stopped in the street once or twice, or mm-hmm. also in the airport once. He mm-hmm. feels some... Uh, um, that it's like he feels the interaction, but it's not that it's uh, distracting in that much. He's he's happy to meet people that watch the film. He's, he feels proud and honored. Um, I think the more the most uh, uh, the biggest change was between uh, my father and me. Now he really takes uh, puts in mind that he needs to hug, and he's hugging me, and then he says, you see, also after you are uh, 40, I still hug you, and we're hugging. He really puts mm-hmm. his mind into that. And also, the funny thing is that he started to speak with his father, uh, his father's picture, so he, he wow. told me that before he goes to sleep, he makes small conversations with his father and tells, tells him how his day was, and I think it's a nice thing that happened with uh, the film that's beautiful um oh thank you so much is there anything that um you wanted to say that i didn't ask you um for people that are interested in uh, watching the other films they're all available in my website with 23 i think is is a film that is interesting to to watch because they're really it's a continuous uh, summer night is a continuous film to week 23 so they're all available in my website or adnaston.com and that's it. It was a really great pleasure to have this uh, conversation. And I'm very uh, honored that you invited me. Oh, my gosh. Oh, thank you. We're so honored to be presenting your film at the 2022 Boston Jewish Film Festival. Thank you for taking time out for Tel Aviv and for your work of art. Um, and to all tuning in, thanks so much um, and have a great rest of your day. Thank you very much.